Hey y'all, welcome to Restless Chipotle Kitchen. Today, we're gonna make a chicken dish that's inspired by one of my favorites, lasagna. You're gonna need two pounds of boneless chicken breast or you could use boneless chicken thighs if you prefer. Um, mozzarella cheese, I'm going to shred this. I'll need one cup and there will be divided use. I'm gonna use some in the cheese, the ricotta cheese and some on top. And I like to, as you probably know if you've been here before, um, I like to shred the cheese from a block because it melts much better, it tastes much better. Uh, Pre-shredded pre -shredded cheese has a cellulose um, dust on it to keep it from sticking together. So if you can possibly do it, shred it from a block. You're going to need two cups of marinara, whatever your favorite kind of marinara sauce is. If you like spicy, try the arrabbiata. Um, but this is just plain four cheese pasta sauce. So whatever your favorite kind is, is fine. Um, ricotta cheese. Now you're gonna need 15 or 16 ounces, depending on how it comes. This happens to be 15 ounces. I use whole milk ricotta because I prefer it. You can use the part skim ricotta if you prefer. That's fine, whatever kind you normally use. You're gonna need four cloves of garlic. And these are really cool. I just wanna show y'all. Um, I just found these on Amazon and they're really cool. It's frozen, it's frozen mashed garlic. Let's see if you can see it. It's frozen and then you just pop one out and that is a full clove of garlic. So what I like about this is um, if I have garlic cloves sitting around, I may use all of them. A lot of times I don't use all of them and they go bad. If I have garlic in the refrigerator, the same thing happens. So this is kept in the freezer and you just pop them out and um, I, you could let them stand at room temperature for a few minutes to thaw. I put these in the microwave for 15 seconds and that was about right. But watch them really carefully because I wasted the first four because I put them in the microwave and then I walked away and when I came back, they were all burnt, okay? So that, and then Italian seasoning. Um, the recipe calls for a teaspoon of Italian seasoning, but I really like to add the um, good season zesty Italian and I usually add about a tablespoon of this in place of the Italian seasoning. If you do that, don't use salt because this is really salty, but either one is fine, but this is just how I prefer to do it. And last but not least, half cup Parmesan. I also forgot to tell y'all spinach, um, baby spinach. My recipe on the blog doesn't call for a lot. It calls for like a half a cup of baby spinach, I think. That's because I have avid spinach haters in my family. If you don't, you can certainly use more than half a cup, okay? You're gonna chop it up, but we'll get to that in a minute. I just wanted to make sure that I told y'all baby spinach, fresh baby spinach. Okay, we're gonna put our mozzarella cheese that we've grated into a bowl. And to that, we're gonna add the Parmesan. And so, <laughs> It, the recipe calls for one cup of mozzarella and half a cup of Parmesan, but you know, cheese is cheese. So if you want to add a little bit more, that's fine. Mix it up really good and then set it aside. So we're gonna take another bowl and we're gonna mix our ricotta, or if you say it the Italian way, it's ricotta, I believe. Unfortunately, I don't, I'm from Texas. So ricotta it is. And you're just gonna mash that up. See how smooth and creamy that is? That's, let me see. Let me make sure you can see how smooth and creamy that is. Uh, that's whole, why I like whole milk ricotta. It's um, much creamier and smoother and just all around, I like it better than the low fat. It's a little harder to find sometimes, but really good. So we're gonna take that. We're going to add half of the garlic so that's two cloves, and these are already mashed, remember? You're gonna have yours all minced up if you don't get them already mashed. We're gonna mix that up. Mm. 
and I'm gonna add my Italian seasoning. And this is where you're gonna add um, a teaspoon of mixed Italian seasoning blend herbs, or mm, about a tablespoon of the Good Seasons Italian. And if you're gonna use the, the uh, Good Seasons Italian, especially, remember, no salt. And be sure to taste it. Um, after you get everything mixed in, go ahead and taste it and make sure that it's got enough flavor for you, okay? Because this is where a good majority of the flavor from for the dish comes from. That's really good, but I think I want the rest of it. So there we go. Okay, you want that to be mixed up really, really well. Now we're gonna add our spinach. And this is about a, full, about a full cup. It's really not that much. Just mix that in really well. You can use probably up to two cups of chopped baby spinach for this if you want to. Just kind of depends on your how your family handles it, right? All right, and then we're gonna add half of our cheese mixture. And be sure to um, stir it up really well so that it, you know, the Parmesan and the mozzarella is all mixed up. I, I, I eyeball it. I don't tend to uh, measure it out, but you, you can measure it out if you want it to be exact. I usually use a little less cheese in this and a little more cheese on the top, but you do you, it's fine, whichever way. So we'll put that in there. Set that aside and I'm gonna mix that up really well. This, what happens is the mozzarella and uh, Parmesan melt into the ricotta and it, it's just so amazing. It tastes like, almost like a lasagna, but then it's got the flavor of the chicken in there. So good. Okay. And by the way, if you happen to be on low carb, or um, a keto friendly, keto friendly diet. Uh, this is quite low carb, so that's good too. Okay, set that aside. All right, now we've got our 13 by nine inch baking pan, and I'm gonna spray that with some no stick spray. Make sure nothing sticks. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of sauce to the bottom, and I'm gonna spread that around. And take the chicken breasts and you can trim them of this extra fat if you want. I usually do. I didn't take the time to do it today. So if you prefer to, to pound the chicken so it'll be you think it'll be a little more tender or you want it to be even in size, you can go ahead and do that. When I do that, it doesn't fit into my pan and this was the size that I had for today. So that's why I'm not doing that, but you can. Okay, there's our chicken breast. Let me wash my hands. Somebody accused me of not washing my hands in one of my videos. And I have to tell y'all that I do wash my hands quite a lot, but when I do these videos, they're probably two hours, hour and a half long, and then I edit them. And when I edit them, I cut out all the non-essential parts. And moving away to wash my hands is one of the things. So. I promise you I wash my hands, okay? Just just so that's perfectly clear. All right, so we're gonna take the remaining two cloves of garlic and it's mashed. I'm gonna have to wash my hands again, but we're just gonna spread that on the chicken. And this is where if you like, I'm not a big salt eater, I have to admit. And so if you are, um, and especially if you didn't use the Good Seasons Italian dressing mix, then you're gonna want to salt the chicken right here. And actually, after I, wash, after I wash my hands again, I'm probably gonna go ahead and put a little bit of salt on it too. Okay, I'm just gonna give it a light dust of salt because I think it's gonna be plenty salty. There we go. Now we're gonna spread the ricotta mixture over the chicken. 
And I usually like to put a little bit on each one of them first and then go back and add more because I am, I don't eyeball things very well sometimes. So it's just easier for me to add than it is to take for me to take away, right? You could actually probably do two more chicken breasts with this amount of ricotta. I just like a lot of cheese, a lot of ricotta on mine, but you could spread it out more if you wanted to. All right, now, as you can probably guess, we're gonna cover it <clears throat> with the marinara, and we're gonna do the same thing, put a little bit on, and then go back and add more if we need to. Um, I usually use a whole jar of it, and I think that may be more than two cups, but you don't really need all of it. We just like a lot of marinara. The other thing about it is uh, a lot of times I will serve this with pasta and if there's extra marinara on it, you can just um, take a chicken breast and lay it on top of the cooked buttered pasta and you're, you know, you're good to go. Spread that, oops. Spread that around a little bit, but be gentle because you don't want to really mix the ricotta in there. You just want to cover it up. All right, I think we got that. Now, that's going to go in the oven at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes or until you can put a, an instant read thermometer in it and it'll, um, it'll measure 160 degrees in the center of the chicken. At that point, I'm gonna pull it out of the oven. I'm going to add the rest of the cheese to the top and put it back in the oven for just a couple of minutes and then we'll be ready to go. So I will see you then. That is not quite at temperature. So we're gonna put it back in the oven. Always do that. Your oven is going to, um, Different people's ovens are going to do different things. My oven is being cantankerous today. And so this is not at 160 degrees by any means. And I do not know what's wrong with it. But I'm going to put that right back in the oven until it behaves itself. And I will talk to y'all in a minute. Okay, y'all. I think we got it this time. Let's um, check and see how the chicken is doing, if it's at the temperature we want. And yes, it is. It's 160 degrees. Keep that out. Now, 165 is the temperature that we're looking for. But we're going to put this cheese on top. That look amazing. We're going to put this cheese on top and um, put it back in so that the cheese gets all good and melted and then it'll be ready to go. Okay, y'all, it's all finished. Now, look how melty that cheese got. It looks so good. Um, you can't imagine how good it smells in here. I'm gonna let that sit for just a minute to let the juices settle and let the cheese settle a little bit, and then I'm gonna come back and plate it up. Okay, y'all, it's had a little bit of time to rest. I've got my spaghetti ready, and we're just, first thing I'm gonna do is get some of this yummy sauce, and I'm gonna put it right over the spaghetti. Then, let's grab one of these pieces of chicken. Ooh, look at that. And let's put it right on top of that pasta. Does that look great? Look at that. Well, y'all, this is absolutely delicious. Um, it's easy to make, it goes together fast. You can actually assemble it ahead of time, like the night before, and then just pop it in the oven uh, before dinner. As you saw, uh, sometimes the chicken does not cooperate, so be sure to either give yourself plenty of time. Usually it cooks in about 30 minutes, but Give yourself 45 just in case. If you don't have 45 minutes, go ahead and pound the chicken thinner and that should do the trick. So let's taste this. 
This is so good. It's got lasagna flavor. It's cheesy. It's got all of this gooey cheese on the top. Mm. And then I like to serve it with pasta. And this is a meal that your family's gonna love. So easy, so delicious. I hope you'll try it. I hope you'll come back next week. Be sure to check out the recipe that's on the top somewhere. That, that's a link, just click on it and you'll go right to it. You're gonna love that one too, okay? I'll see y'all next week. Love y'all, bye-bye.